And there's a there's a great uh, cartoon. I think it came from the New Yorker, but um, it was published a while ago. This guy's sitting reading his newspaper, and there's a dog at his feet. You know, it's biting his off frame somewhere. And he's looking over the newspaper, and he says. What is going on? Can anyone tell me what the hell is going on? Anyone feel like that when you read the news? What is going on? You never feel like that? <laughs> All the time, right? What is going on? Anyone feel like that when you read the Bible? What is going on? Even in our scriptures here, we've got, um, you'll see it printed out here, the shorter end of Mark, the longer end of Mark, we've got two endings, even to one of the Gospels, what is going on? Well, the women, these three women who are going to the tomb this morning, they're pretty sure they know what's going on. They're pretty sure. They were with Jesus, they saw him arrested, they, uh, knew that he had been brutally tortured. Uh, they saw him executed on the cross. They saw his limp, dead body taken down from the cross, put into a wrapped in a shroud and put into a tomb that a generous donor had given. They're pretty sure they knew what was going on. The only thing they, uh, they, they didn't know, they, question was how they were going to get that big stone because in front of these burial caves, large stones would be rolled in front of them and as they went out early, early in the morning with their oil so that they could anoint him, give him a proper burial, the only thing that they were wondering about is how they were going to get that stone rolled away. So they knew what was going on. But they got there and not only was stone rolled away, but there was a, there was somebody inside the tomb. It was not Jesus, someone, young man dressed in white, who said, "He was here. He was here, but you just missed him." Kind of like a you know an executive assistant you call up. Yeah, he was here, but you just you just missed him. But he says, if you don't, if you do come by, he'll meet you over in Galilee. You go back to Galilee, then you'll see him there. Okay, they no longer know what's going on. <laughs> Definitely don't know what's going on. And they run. They are just, you know, wild. I mean, wild. So they run. And we should judge because I'm guessing that every one of us would have run too. Don't know what's going on anymore. So the best thing to do when you really have no clue what's going on is just to follow directions. Right? Just follow the directions. And what uh, the directions from this young man are is to go to Galilee. Go back to Galilee. So let's just, you know, go along with them. What are they going to find when they get to Galilee? The first thing they find is breakfast. Just like Jesus, right? He's cooking them breakfast. They find fish, fresh fish grilled over an open fire. They find fresh bread, <clears throat> maybe uh, flatbread, you know, grilling over that open fire. It smells so good. It tastes so good. The first thing they find when they get back to Galilee is they find food. Now, if you've ever, and they find friendship and fellowship. Now, if you've ever hung out with the church very long, you know that you will find food and friendship. <laughs> Wherever Christians are gathered, you're going to find food and you're going to find friendship. The only thing they find is forgiveness. Now, you know, it had not ended so well with the disciples. They had denied their friend. The night that they even knew him, they betrayed him, run away from him, you know, run away from the situation, left him to hang there on his own. So things had not, you know, things had not gone so well 
be with this friendship that they have with Jesus. So they could realistically expect that he would be uh, upset, to say the least. But he's not. They find forgiveness. Now, Bishop Mary, in her Easter letter, she writes about this, and she says, you know, it's not that our human failings don't matter. They do. They really matter. Human failing led to the cross. It leads to the cross. But it doesn't matter the most. It's not what matters the most. In God's eyes, our failure is never as powerful as forgiveness. So in Galilee, we meet up with food and friendship and forgiveness for our babies. And the first thing that Jesus says to them is, peace, peace be with you. We find peace. Now this isn't the kind of peace, you know, that gives that absence of conflict, which we all want, right? I mean, your household is nicer when there is absence of conflict. <laughs> We want absence of conflict in the world. We want it in our nation. And sometimes we get that kind of peace, at least in our households, we get that kind of peace. And it's good. Absence of conflict is good. But this is that, that situational, you know, that goes up and down. But this kind of peace that Jesus breathes on them, breathes into their very heart, this is a peace that passes all understanding. You know, it's not based on logic. Peace that comes deep, deep within us. And it comes from God. We find this peace that passes all understanding. And they find security. They find security. And God knows we need security. I mean, we're right now in the midst of a big argument in this country over, you know, is it more guns is going to make us safer, more secure? Or is it regulations around guns is going to make us more secure? So we're arguing about that. We can all agree, though, that we don't want, you know, bad actors with access to nuclear weapons. We can all agree that we want the security of good, clean water good food, and honest policing, and firefighters who are going to rescue us from burning buildings. So this kind of security is good, and we all want it. You ask any mother or father in any country, in any situation around the world, and they're going to say they want security, <coughs> safety. But again, that kind security is situational, and it can come and it can go. But the security that comes from the resurrected, risen Christ, they meet in Galilee, the resurrected, risen Christ, is the security of God's divine presence with us always. That no hatred, no amount of hatred, no amount of violence, no amount of death can ever take you away from so we have this blessed assurance in the name, and you know, the words of that old gospel here. This blessed assurance that God is with us always, the very air we breathe, the cosmic Christ who fills the entire universe, this risen life of God. So when we follow the directions, we walk with the risen Christ. We definitely find food and friendship. We find forgiveness for all our failings. We find a peace that passes understanding. And we find a blessed assurance that God is here among us. That life will arise again and again and again out of death. Thank you to God, we might never pick up the newspaper and say,
say, yeah, we got what's going on. <laughs> it might never make sense. And even the scriptures, you might hold that book and go, yeah, I, it doesn't make a whole lot of sense. <laughs> but in the presence of the risen Christ, it doesn't matter that we really know what's going on. Because we have peace, we have forgiveness, and we have assurance. Amen. Amen.